Hello everybody, this is Super Comic Girl. So, um, I had this great idea that I was going to do a podcast every Friday. Depend well, it might not be every Friday depending on my scheduling. Um, but I discovered there was a little bit more to trying to do a podcast than just uploading a video like I normally do. So, um, in today's video, sorry about that. It was annoying. So in so uh, in today's um, podcast-like video, or what I want to call it, um, we're going to talk about the move that Marvel made, and this is probably well in advance because they just don't go, oh yeah, next month's coming up, maybe we should just do this. I, I think that these are planned out to the t <laughs> to the annoyance of people uh, that are kind of like. Huh? Really? And you know what I'm talking about. So, earlier today, I was on Facebook, and I was just scrolling through it, and on Comic Book Corner 2.0 Web Heads Unite, which is a great group, um, they announced that Miss Marvel was coming back. Now, as most people know who have been following, who have been fall, who have read comics and stuff like that, um, in, 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 um, The Amazing Spider-Man issue number 26, Miss Marvel dies. Now, this is a very, very interesting thing. So, Doctor Strange made it clear in the part where, um, in, I think it's issue number 27, that, um, or it might be in this one, might be in this one. Um, that in layman's term, bringing her back would disrespect her. Disrespect her sacrifice that she made. What did she do? Well, <laughs> apparently she, apparently something went on and she wasn't able to heal. I don't remember exactly what she did. So, why in God's name would you bring back Miss Marvel so soon after you've killed her off? One thing. She is a mutant. Point blank. So, nobody believed that Kamala Khan was actually dead. Now, Peter Parker knew she was dead, okay? You, poor Peter, oh poor Peter, I feel bad for her. Um, and so, what, um, so, what basically happened was they had her funeral and all that jazz, and what I think is going to happen is the X-Men are going to steal her body, which is kind of be the grossest thing you could ever do. Like, why would you steal someone's body? Oh, I forgot! You're going to take her to... Krakoa, and you're going to resurrect her in her your little egg thing, which I think is stupid, but what do I know? Um, so, yeah. So people did not believe this, um, and in the realm of collecting comic books, death key, like, uh, issues that have the death of a major character or a, or a character that had some kind of hope, uh, they collect them for the, uh, for the value of the comic. I collect comics, not for the value of the comic. I collect comics because I like comics. So, um, so, you have this character, Miss Marvel, who has been in The Amazing Spider-Man for a while. And she really did not have any kind of conversation. When she uh, dies, dies, uh, they did a whole thing about it. So, this comic that came out this week is supposed to be an issue that's probably going to be pretty valuable. Um... However, 
the 26th of this month, X-Men Hellfire Gala 2023. I don't know if they bring this out every year. Is going to be debuting, debuting the return of Miss Marvel as a mutant. Now, the actress who plays her is the one writing the story. Now, I'm, I'm kind of leery about it, but I'll give it a try. That one is coming out next month. What week issue, what issue week, I don't know. So, basically, the X-Men take her body to Krakoa, where she is brought back to life, and she is a mutant. Now, this could be one of several reasons. My main reason, I think, that they are bringing her back as a mutant is to divest her of her inhuman background. Now, as much as I want to believe that this is not going to be the case, there's probably good evidence that Marvel is basically cleaning their hands of anything that deals with the Inhumans. So, why that? One, the Inhumans were created after the X-Men. So the X-Men were already established property. They have a very, very loyal um, fan base. Um, I love the X-Men. I actually got... X-Men issue number one, the facsimile issue. I don't care if it's a facsimile issue. I now own a copy of the comic. So, you have the X-Men who um, represent bigotry, hatred, racism, all the stuff that people do to other people based on the fact they look different. By having Miss Marvel come back as a as a mutant, you're aligning yourself more with what she is in the MCU. So the MCU has a, and this is my own personal opinion, and take it for that, my own personal opinion. I think that when you've got uh, comic book uh, characters that people see on Disney+, Plus, it greatly affects the comic book sales of that comic series. For example is I absolutely absolutely loved Moon Knight. I never heard of him before. Never heard of Moon Knight in my entire life. I watched the MCU I watched the Disney Plus Moon Knight because it was Egyptian. I started buying the comics because I wanted to read more of his adventures. Sorry. Same thing with um, with X Men. Um, when at the X Men movies came out, I suddenly became very interested in the X Men. So movies and TV shows can affect, at least in my own little small bubble of the world, can affect how well how much this comic book sells. Sorry about that. I, I had lunch and... Ugh. <laughs> if anyone wants to know what did I have for lunch, I had lasagna. Just to let you guys know. Um, so, yeah. So, you have a character called like Miss Marvel that is an inhuman. She was affected by the Terrigen Mist. She developed inhuman uh, powers. And she was classified as an inhuman. She... Sorry. She met the Inhumans. She, you had a uh, lockjaw that took her everywhere. She definitely was in the, uh, in the, uh, the secret heroes. Uh, she, you know, I mean, everything about it was like, she's an Inhuman. She is not a mutant. She's not, does not have the X gene whatsoever. When we get her in her live action Form. People were like, oh great, great, we're going to have an Inhuman, and it's going to be just like in the comics, and it wasn't. There was no Terrigen Mist, there was no uh, Inhuman Gene activated, none of that, and the answer quite clearly is because the Inhumans were not popular. So, 
afraid that it would that it would go down the same route as the other one most likely affected uh, their decision to make make Kamala Khan's powers more energy based instead of it being uh, based on the Terrigen Mist. So at the very last episode of the first season of Miss Marvel, her friend slash the guy that's got a crush on her told her that there was a mutation in her DNA. And when he used the word mutation, you saw, you heard the 90s X-Men theme song. Why in the world would they do this? Quite simply because they could now. Now, there is this whole thing going around that when 20th Century Fox acquired the rights to the X-Men, they told Marvel as part of the agreement that Marvel could not use the word mutant or mutation or anything that deals has the word mutant uh, in the uh, in their projects. So if they went into uh, media, they couldn't use it. Here's a prime example of why a lot of people believe that is the case. Um, there is two characters in the uh, in the MCU: the Scarlet Witch, and I believe it's. Quicksilver. In the comics, the Scarlet Witch is the daughter of Magneto. And in the documentary Empower, which is Marvel Power, for Scarlet Witch, they tell you point blank that Scarlet Witch is the daughter of Magneto. She is a mutant with the ability to affect probability. In the MC universe, like Avengers Age of Ultron, uh, WandaVision. Her powers are magic based. They have, you know, she's a, she's a, uh, in, uh, was it Midnight Suns? She is a, uh, apprentice to Agatha Harkins, who is a witch. She's classified as being a witch. She's classified as having magic. She's a magus. All this type of stuff. Um, and, She's also very formidable. She does not have the ability to affect probability. She just has magic. This is the thing is, this only happens when you divest a character from its original source. So for example is, uh, is both of them lost their parents. If, if their father was Magneto, he would have survived. But his father, but their father, is not Magneto. It is a, it's some random guy. So you have a mutant that we know is a mutant from the X Men, that we that they are not even classified as a mutant because they could not, and that was where it all comes from. Especially. If you, People look, people see, people go, wait a minute, that's a mutant. Why are they not using the word mutant? So that's why that that's why people believe that. So now that 20th Century Fox is owned by Disney, 20th Century Fox is own is uh, uh, Disney owns Marvel, they were able to use the word once again because the agreement if that agreement is there, does not exist anymore. So when you kill off Miss Marvel the Inhuman, and you bring Miss Marvel back as a mutant, then that totally cuts her off from that Inhuman storyline or that Inhuman um, past. Now she says we're not ignoring that she used to be an Inhuman but we are stating that she is now a mutant to go along with her MCU counterpart. So we're going to see what happens. So the 26th of this month, I, I don't know if I mentioned it, um, we are getting that gala issue, and I'm definitely going to pick it up. There's going to be people that are going to be upset because they bought the issue that had the death of Miss Marvel, and I'm pretty sure they're worried that the issue is now worthless, because now that she's coming back. So I will say still pick up the issue. 
because it probably will be an important key because you're talking about the end of Miss Marvel as an Inhuman. Um, so, like this week coming up, I'm definitely going to be going over to the comic book shop. I will pick up um, issue 26 of The Amazing Spider-Man just because it is the issue where Miss Marvel dies. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's still going... I, I still think it's going to be an important issue, an important key, um, because it does have the first death of Kamala Khan. Um, but I think that a lot of people didn't buy it because they had already been told that she was going to die and there was no need to buy it. Um, but yeah, I mean, have, just keep as a collector, collector item. Um, but I'm definitely going to definitely um, send this off to be uh, graded and uh, just have it up on my wall. Um, but yeah, it is, I think, I think it sucks that Marvel resurrects characters and all that and I also do believe that what happens in the MCU does affect what happens in comics because they want, they, Marvel wants people to be able to connect that particular issue with a particular, like, show or whatever. But, yeah. But, um, I, I just, I just shake my head the whole thing. It's like, oh, God. But, she's come back as a mutant, uh, in her series next month and I will be picking it up because I think it will be an important key issue um, at least that's what I personally think um, and yeah uh, so um, yeah so uh, let me see what else what else I should mention in this video before I hang up um, yes uh, one thing I definitely am thinking about just now is okay so miss marvel's coming back as a mutant is she gonna be part of xavier's team is she gonna be working with storm and wolverine and all these other and how in the world is wolverine going to react to the fact that she's back because he was really torn up inside when um because you know he you know he was the first mutant that kamala ever encountered so we'll see what um what happens but I, I will say I did like the uh, I did like the costume they have for her. I thought it was really cool. So uh, I'm going to here. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, uh, I will I will leave this as a question. Do you think they're doing this for money, or do you think they want to do away with the human human part of her, or what? I you know, I don't know. I mean, I'm asking you guys, do you think that? I mean, what is your, why are you, why do you think they're doing this? Uh, because she wasn't really a popular character. Um, but yeah, I mean, Marvel's got a bad habit of bringing back uh, characters. You look at Peter Parker, he killed Green Goblin in issue 122 of The Amazing Spider-Man. So, uh, yeah, so let me know what you think. I'll see you guys around.